Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today we're gonna to talk about polar vortexes, record cold snaps, global warming and the melting Arctic sea ice. So let's get to it. So I'm gonna to try to explain this as simply as possible. There's this thing called the Northern Jet Stream. It's this stream of air that goes around the earth from west to east continuously. It's this thin band of air that's traveling around the earth continuously. It's traveling about one, between 100 to 150 kilometers an hour, depending on the season and the factors I'm gonna get into today. The cold air is in the Arctic, okay? The Arctic is like the planetary air conditioner. That cold air is contained there by this jet stream. By and large, that movement of air blocks the, well, it's actually created by the warm air interacting with the cold air, but it keeps that cold air up top. Now, the jet stream speed is determined by the temperature differential between the temperature at the equator and the temperature up top. What that means in plain English is that if this is really cold and this is really hot, you have a fast moving jet stream, which keeps all that cold air up there. If for whatever reason though, this is warmer than usual and this is the same temperature just as hot but this is warmer than usual that's less of a temperature differential that means the jet stream is going to be slower and that means that that cold air is going to protrude deeper into the south so that cold air which was contained up here and which you know is supposed to be preserving the sea ice now is being diffused downwards because of the broken down jet stream making the arctic warm even faster that's not the only factor that is causing the arctic to warm back faster there's a lot of other factors um, i should say that the arctic is warming twice as fast as the rest of the planet and this is why you're getting this breakdown of the jet stream because if they were warming at the same speed if the whole planet was warming at you know um, the 1.5 degrees that it's elevated since industrial uh, since the industrial revolution then you wouldn't have that effect on the jet stream but because the arctic temperature has increased 3.4 degrees celsius since the 1800s or 1700s sorry and this um, the rest of the planet has only warmed 1.5 degrees celsius that's created a reduction in the temperature differential between the poles and the equator and that has led to a breaking down of the jet stream which is causing these wild cold snaps that we're experiencing this does not mean that on the whole the earth is getting cooler in fact that is going to cause the earth to get warmer faster because once again that air which is supposed to be contained in the arctic which is preserving the sea ice is now being diffused throughout the rest of the planet so simply put lots of people seem to be struggling with this idea of well it's really cold outside where i live therefore global warming isn't real and it's it's a simple simple concept to understand that there's a difference between local and global you can have minus 70 degrees in new york city and you can still have an average global increase in temperature on the whole because there's local and there's global they're two different things and this is why but watch this summer is probably going to be really hot because now a lot of that cold air this is how I understand I could be wrong about this part of it there's a lot of other um, factors which create domino effects which are going to make it warm anyways but I'm to assume that that cold air escaping southward now means that less is going to be trapped up there for summertime and that's going to uh, lead to a rapid warming of the arctic ice even more which is going to reduce the amount of sunlight that is reflected by that ice and it's going to actually you know accelerate the warming of the planet so it it's confusing for a lot of people i think because a lot of that arctic air which is normally contained at the north pole is simply going downward into the southern regions because the jet stream has broken down because of the change in heat differential 
it's simple science for me. If I can understand it, you can understand it. And I'm pretty sure most people here understand it. So, you know, just, it doesn't take too long to research this stuff to figure that out. I mean, that's pretty basic. It all makes sense to me. Maybe there's something I'm wrong about. Is there something I'm wrong about? I don't know. Maybe I know somebody's going to talk about the Maunder Minimum. Look, I've done research on the Maunder Minimum and apparently Grand Solar Minimum only would uh, offset the effects of the current warming trend by 10% at best. Whether you believe it's anthropogen anthropogenic or not, it doesn't matter. Um, I mean, it does obviously matter because you know, that means that we are culpable, but it's such a contentious issue, I'd rather not bring it up. But that's why you're getting these crazy cold temperatures. That's why um, the hurricanes are intensifying. That's why we're probably getting the droughts and the forest fires and all the other wild extreme weather. Because as that jet stream breaks down, it's going to disrupt the equilibrium, which has held the growing seasons in check, which has held uh, just the natural um, ecology of various places in check. So yeah, you're going to see it. So you can actually have a situation where you're having record cold in one part of the continent. And then on the west coast, you're getting record hot temperatures. And this happens because of this jet stream business. So I'm going to post a link in the description to a couple of videos which explain this in greater detail. Let me know if you have any questions and please correct me if there's anything I've been wrong about in this video. I'm not a climatologist. Uh, I'm just uh, trying to make sense of this stuff to the best of my capability. But whatever you do, do not tell me to go and research GSM. I've researched it. I'm not convinced. Okay. That's just my personal opinion. You are entitled to your opinion. Let the chips fall where they may. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper Out. The best way to support this YouTube channel is to support yourself by gearing up through CanadianPreparedness.com or BugOutRoll.ca. Premium quality gear at the best possible price using the incredibly secure and easy to use Shopify platform. We offer free shipping to the United States for orders over $200 USD and free shipping to Canada over $75. So support the channel by supporting yourself.